In this video of the No Mouse Excel series, I'm going to show you how to group and ungroup rows and columns with godlike precision and speed. Let's get started. The art of grouping is to allow anyone to see both a summary and the detailed version of your worksheet by simply grouping and ungrouping the rows and columns. For example, we have your classic cell sheet here by geography and by quarter. But you guys can see the problem, right? Too much data. We need to quickly group this up and we're not going to be using the mouse. The key shortcut to grouping is hitting Alt A G G. And if you recall from the how to navigate like a pro video, we can quickly hold down shift and space to select the row we want to group then hit individually, Alt A G G. Boom, grouped. But grouping a row one at a time is sometimes too slow. So you can also select one row and then select the rest of the block by holding down Control Shift, then down arrow, and then press Alt A G G. Boom, all grouped. Grouping columns is no different than rows. We select the column by holding down Control plus space and then hit Alt A G G to group it. A super easy way to remember the shortcut for grouping is thinking of the first three letters of the word aggregate, which means to group. English majors, please spare me the Oxford dictionary on this one. Now that we have grouped everything perfectly, let me show you how to open and close groups. Let's start with closing currently open groups. To close a group that's currently open, you need to navigate to anywhere within that group and simply hit Alt A H individually. And you've now successfully closed that group. Just to be clear, you don't have to be at the start or the end of the group. You can literally be anywhere within that group and Alt A H will work. Pretty neat. The easiest way to open an already closed group is to wrap the group with the two cells before and after the closed group you want to open and hit Alt A J. For example, the closed group I want to open here is columns E to H. So I need to select the cell in both column D and column I like so. Recall that we can select a block of cells by holding the shift then the up, down, left or right arrow keys. And then let's hit Alt A J. We've opened the group. The easy way to remember the difference between closing open groups and opening closed groups is H is for hide. So I use Alt A H to hide or close a group and to open a group, it's the letter right next to it or Alt A J. Please don't press the little plus buttons here. Each time I see an intern hit each of these buttons one at a time while we're working together, I think to myself, you know, why are you adding extra seconds to both yours and my workday? Well, obviously I show them the ways of the Excel Jedi shortly after. Before we continue, if you want to see more pro efficiency tips, please hit the like and subscribe button. Also, let us know if you have any requests or topics you would like to see related to No Mouse Excel in the comments section below. On many occasions, you might have a ton of grouped columns and rows in a worksheet and opening and closing them one at a time would just take way too long. An easy way to learn to open and close groups in one shot is by selecting the block of cells you want and then hitting either Alt A J to open them or Alt A H to close them. Alternatively, you can open and close every single group at once. To do so, you want to select everything on that worksheet by holding down Control and then A. Which, depending on where you are, Excel might only select a block of cells. If that's the case, hold down Control A again and Excel should select everything on the worksheet. You can then do what we usually do by hitting Alt A H and close all the groups or hit Alt A J and reopen all the closed groups. A word of caution. Be extra careful when you use Control A since you are essentially selecting the entire worksheet, which for your reference contains 17 billion cells per worksheet. If you do something silly to all 17 billion cells at once, 
you might have the power to crash your Excel by overloading it with commands to process. For example, what happens if I press Control A and then grouped all the rows in Excel? I'll let you find out on your own, but the result is kind of surprising. The last missing piece of the puzzle is learning how to ungroup those group rows and columns. The process is very easy in fact, it's just the reverse of grouping rows and columns. Essentially, you select the rows and columns that you want to permanently ungroup and then hit Alt A U U. For example, if I wanted to ungroup this column here, I would hold down Control then Space to select it and then hit individually Alt A U U. Alternatively, you can also ungroup a bunch of columns by selecting a block of columns and hitting Alt A U U. Just like matryoshka dolls, I'm talking about these things. You can also matryoshka groups in Excel as well. For example, we can make a smaller group in this large group by doing the exact same actions as we learned before. We highlight the columns we want to group again and hit Alt A G G. As you group more and more, you will see Excel add these numbers in the top left corner. These numbers show you how many subgroups you are essentially creating. Little unknown fact, you can actually use your mouse, it hurts me just saying this, and press the numbers to open and close each subgroup, like so. But this is no mouse Excel. We don't need the mouse. We use our magic keyboard shortcuts. For those who usually hide rows and columns in your worksheet, Please, please, please consider grouping as an alternative. It's very easy for other users to completely miss a section because you hit rows or columns. It's barely noticeable to anyone else apart from this tiny double line on the side and not really beneficial to anyone unless you are actively trying to commit some accounting fraud. Which I guess in that case, you, you can't consider hiding rows and columns. This is one of those functions I wish I could ban if I was the Excel police. The disasters it creates far outweigh the benefits. I'll discuss how to protect cells from other users in another video. Another pro tip is to not go overboard with grouping. In my experience, ideally, you never go above three subgroups. I've seen Excels with like seven subgroups. Little did they know they were actually one group away from Excel's limit of eight subgroups. Anyways, the point being, try not to overgroup. You're trying to make it easy to navigate your worksheet, not complicate another person's life by handing them a giant matryoshka worksheet. Well, I think that's enough no mouse Excel for this video. My goal with each video is not to teach you useless Excel shortcuts, but the finesse and the techniques to master Excel, to become one with Excel, so you can waste less time at work and focus on what really matters in your life. Join me next time as I show you the mechanics behind drag efficiency in Excel, and I'm not talking crazy physics here.